Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnius, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Dinosaurs. Today we have, yet again, more dinosaur news, although the dinosaur news today is sort of sad and boring. It's not sad, I mean all of the dinosaurs have either evolved into birds, or they are dead. So, it can't really get much sadder than that. However, there is some... Uh, how am I gonna get out of here? I've completed... Oh, this is this is probably the worst staircase I've ever made in my entire life. <laughs> oh, clearly, clearly I did not make the staircase well. Oh well, it'll be fine. I'm pretty sure I'm never gonna use that mine ever again. But after completing a lot of mining, apparently the, uh... Ah! Oh, hello, Mr. Skeleton Jerk. I'll, uh, I'll take care of you, no problem. Strafe! Come on, no, 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 there we go. Whew, level 14, nice. So, after doing a bit of mining, I have collected uh, about eh, a little bit more than one and a half stacks of iron, more than one stack of coal, that should be more than enough. I think that's fine. Eh, creepers, hello creepers. I don't like you, creeper, oh no. There you go. Pretty sure we're not gonna die before we get back home. Home is pretty close. We have plenty of food left so we can run all the way back. But yeah, after mining for quite a while, it is time to record another episode. And we do have some dinosaur news, like I said, although it is a bit disappointing. I'm not exactly sure what's up with dinosaur news recently. I, um, uh, I sort of hoped that over the past three weeks or so there would be more stuff coming out. Apparently there isn't. I think we may have to go into the uh, prehistoric animals news. Because there's plenty of information on, on fossils of prehistoric animals. Not necessarily dinosaurs, but uh, horses and other things like that. And hey, we have those those quagga as well here, so maybe maybe you guys would be okay with that. Where? There you are. Eh. So let's go turn our iron into iron bars to make ourselves some iron bars, I guess. Iron fence? I don't know what it's called. But we'll make that and we will finish our enclosure, hopefully today, maybe. Do not want to do this. I'm pretty sure we don't need this as well. E. Let's cut this in half, speed this up a little bit. Cut this in half. Yep, much more cool than I suspected, actually. And, uh, let's see, 20, 31, we'll split this one, just cause. Alright, there we go, so that is, uh, not exactly as many as I would like, but I'm, I'm really lazy and I don't feel like making another furnace at the moment. So, let us discuss, before we discuss the dinosaur news, let's discuss a little bit about SpaceX. SpaceX has once again delayed their, their rocket launch, it was supposed to happen on January 6th, it's going to be happening on this Friday instead, which is good for me, I suppose, because I was actually asleep when it was supposed to happen. It was scrubbed due to uh, some... Oh, actually, we have dirt. Let's go fill our stuff with dirt. It was scrubbed due to that still has dirt in it. So does that. These apparently have plenty of dirt because we have not been on the same chunk, so I suppose that is why. Here we go. There's all your dirt, guys. Um, I will take this dirt from you and put it somewhere where it will be useful. There you go. We will do that. But yeah, so... What was I saying? Oh yeah, due to some sort of issue with it... What was it? An actuator, I think I read? I don't remember at all. I'm not going to even say anything because I'm just going to embarrass myself. But there's a problem. It's scrubbed and it will launch hopefully on Friday. Now the problem with the commercial resupply missions to the International Space Station is that the International Space Station is in an orbit that is quite annoying for launching rockets actually. I, I mean I'm sure there's a wonderful reason why they chose to put it in this orbit. I'm not exactly sure of what it is. But due to the fact that it is uh, not equatorial, like perfectly, or in the same plane as the launch site where we generally launch rockets to it, we uh, 
we have generally for rocket launches you'll have a launch window that's somewhere in between one second and several hours long because generally you want the rocket to be in a certain place in a certain time and in order to be there you have to launch it at a certain time that makes sense everyone can understand that well due to the orientation and the position of the international space station the only way to launch stuff to it is with a one second launch window which means if you delay or you scrub or anything happens you have to try again next time so uh, I believe each time a launch window opens up for the International Space Station, it actually moves back one hour during the day. So the launch windows get progressively earlier, which means that apparently people who live in North America are going to have to wake up at like 5 a.m. or something like that for the next launch. Which is sad for them, but um, good for me, because I'll, I'll be awake. Unfortunately, I actually prefer the launches happening during the daytime in North America because that means that I'm not working when they launch. It's like the middle of the morning, which I'm always awake at some nonsense hour. It's like 3 a.m. right now and I'm still awake. Heavens knows why. That is the life that I lead. Isn't that right, little Oreo? Pet, pet, pet. It looks like our bars are almost done. 21 of them here, 21 of them here. Wonderful, wonderful. Still nine more, that is... No, thank you. Not what I wanted. E pretty sure I can't... Oh, never mind. I have one right here. Let's see, how did I... Yeah, that's that's how I do this. I don't know why I did it like that, though. I should probably do it like this. Yeah, there you go. And I have four left over. Wonderful! Um, I actually have no idea how many of these I'm going to need. It's probably tons. Probably have no idea what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, this is taking forever. Thank you very much. I'll just put these over here. Waiting for the very last iron ore. Please hurry. So yeah, so SpaceX once again should be launching on Friday. So be sure to turn in and uh, tune in to turn in tune in. And try to check it out for yourself. I used up all of that iron. I probably should have saved some of it. Oh well. It will be fine. Is it nighttime? No, not quite yet. It's getting there, but not quite. So let us discuss before we discuss the dinosaur news, which is disappointing because it's not as cool as I would like it to be. Let us discuss Twitter. Now Twitter, as you guys know, is an amazing social site. With lots of opportunities for reaching new audiences and new stuff like that, which is how a normal YouTuber would talk about it. I, on the other hand, didn't actually get into Twitter until I was already a YouTuber. I wasn't really into the Twitter craze beforehand. I, um... Uh, I don't know, I wasn't really a big fan of Twitter or uh, the community of Twitter. I've, I've warmed up to it quite a bit now, since being a YouTuber, you sort of have to use Twitter. So uh, it's it's not so bad. I think we have like 830 something followers on Twitter, which surprisingly is not that many. I'm pretty sure some people's grandmas have more followers on Twitter than me. We're not going to talk about that because that's depressing. Go follow me on Twitter to make me feel feel better. What was that sound? How did I even do that? But yeah, if you would like me to feel better about that, go ahead, go ahead, click on click on that link. Down in the video description below. Check me out on Twitter. It's awesome, guys. We're all friends on Twitter. But yeah, so... I've uh, I've noticed, I looked through a lot of people like, I don't know, Terrace and MK and a lot of other people who I know. And some of them, like MK for example, who have fewer subscribers than I do. Uh, MK is a wonderful YouTuber and also a very, very adorable person whom I love. And she is awesome. But I was, I was always sort of curious as to why she was so popular on Twitter. And I think I've come to the conclusion after looking through plenty of tweets by plenty of people. That probably the reason that people are popular on Twitter is because they have feelings about things. And they like to talk about stuff. And inevitably, someone has an opinion about something that they just they need to tell everyone who follows them about it. And these people appreciate these people's opinions on these things. And sometimes these things are quite emotional things, so, I don't know, for me personally, some things I look at and I'm like, wow, I I cannot imagine me ever saying things like this in a public forum. 
And yet, people love those things. Like, looking back at my most popular Twitter post and my most popular Facebook post, invariably the most popular thing I've ever made, did I, did I do this correctly? Was the picture of the cat thinking I was a tree and trying to like crawl up in my business and go to sleep. Um, people love that. That thing got so many retweets and favorites and it got so many likes. It got like 30 or 40, 47 likes, something like that on Facebook. Um, and needless to say, because it got so many likes and so many retweets and stuff, it actually ended up making us more popular on Facebook. Like, more than, uh... 300 or 400 people, maybe? I can't I can't remember the numbers, but basically a lot more people saw it than the usual 50 that see our Facebook posts because so many people liked it. And the reason that people liked it was because it was a personal thing. It was a picture of me playing with a cat, and people love cats, but, you know, that, that being as it is, it was also a very personal thing. And... I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I'm not exactly the most, like, adept at expressing my feelings. Those feeling things are very complicated and I don't really know like how to do that. I, uh, I especially don't know how to do that on a public forum. I have I have a few videos where I have strong feelings about certain things where I express my opinions. I even have um, a live stream on Twitch where I actually cried a little bit because people were like so so generous and like supportive of my my gaming and Twitch stuff and this, I, t I really can't wait till I get all of this freaking permanent residency stuff done. Hopefully, maybe I can I can do Twitch streaming again. But um, yeah. So although although there is like emotional stuff in in my life, and I do have emotions about stuff, going out and uh, like posting it on Twitter, I always had the feeling that I was like bothering people. You know, always felt like. Why would anyone possibly ever want to uh, read how I feel about, oh, I don't know, a uh, semi-recent thing that happened in the news was the, uh, the sort of, I don't, I don't know if you would call it terrorism or just a bunch of like crazy people who may or may not actually have a plan, but basically a uh, magazine office in Paris. Oh, he has red eyes now. Wonderful. All right, Ali. A magazine office in Paris was attacked and some people were killed, which is very depressing and sad. You know what? It just it sounds bad when I use voices to talk about when people die. I don't I don't know if uh if I should I didn't even mean to do that. I feel like I'm a terrible person now. Great. See see what you've all done? I do not have any of my stone stuff on me. This is not good. Um That works. All right. So, yeah, so that happened. If I were to tweet about that and use the hashtag, the associated hashtag with that, I could probably get more exposure and, like, talk about things that people would want to probably argue with me about. It probably wouldn't be anything good. Yeah, I'll use, I'll use this one. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. But really, I, I don't feel that my uh, my opinions on, on that are very relevant to anyone else's life. And I really don't feel like anyone would really appreciate knowing how I feel about that anyway. So the most that I can say in a video is probably something like, that's terrible, and uh, let's you know keep our hearts out and open for the people of, of Paris, France, who are currently dealing with a very difficult situation. I, um... Uh, I don't know, just talking about my, my deep-rooted feelings on topics is sort of a, a strange thing for me to do. And honestly, on a lot of topics, I don't even have feelings, so... Meh. I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to get them Twitter followers and stuff. Get my, my army of minions to do my bidding. Who knows? I have no idea. Oh, actually, I I need to do the uh, the corners like this, but I I'm not gonna look up how to do that now. I'm busy I'm doing other stuff. But yeah, there's that 
So, now that I've talked about that, you guys should totally go follow me on Twitter and try to give me ideas on Twitter about what sort of stuff I should post there, because obviously just posting my videos doesn't really get us a lot of people. Clearly, I need to be more talkative and tell you guys about what I'm eating at every moment of the day and other ridiculous stuff. Mmm, chili. Actually, I haven't had chili today. Today, I made some stir-fried onion and beef fried rice, which uh, is a little bit bland. I was I was hoping to put some vegetables in there as well. Unfortunately, the mart that's right across the street now from me does uh, does not carry any sorts of vegetables that I would like to put in. There we go. Put in my stir-fried rice, which is uh, unfortunate because I really like broccoli and eggplant, but um, we only had onions and beef. So onions and beef stir-fry it is. Wish they had pineapple. Freaking love beef and pineapple stir-fried rice. Mm, so good. I really hope that, uh... Oh, actually, I was about to say I hope that I convince you guys to come and visit Korea because our food is delicious here, when I remembered that someone did come and visit Korea, and they even contacted me on Facebook, and they were like, Yo, Magnus, I'm gonna go to Korea. I would like to meet you there, and I was totally looking forward to that. And apparently they came to Korea... And I, I even told them, like, yo, when you come to Korea, you know, contact me and we'll we'll talk about schedules and I'll set up a time when I can see you. And since you're too young to go drinking, I'll buy you a hamburger or something at Lutteria. Like, whatever. Since clearly, like, not all of you are old enough to have an adult life in Korea. I was, I was totally cool with it, just, like, eating at a fast food restaurant or something like that. But, um, dude never contacted me again. Sort of weird. Um, apparently the, uh period of time that he was supposed to be in Korea came and went, and no contact ever came. So I guess he changed his mind about wanting to meet me. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like I was looking forward to it or anything. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not really that emotional about it. But, I mean, it was sort of strange. I was I was looking forward to meeting one of you guys. As, uh, as awkward as I'm sure a meeting between you and, and myself would be, I, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't avoid it. I'd be up for it. I have respect for you as individuals and as fans. And if you came all the way to Korea, I mean, it's like a $1,100 plane ticket. I, I don't think I could uh, avoid meeting you if you came to Korea. So, you know, once again, if any of you guys or gals ever come to Korea, just send me a message, send me a, an email or... Contact me on Facebook and make sure uh, the word Korea is plainly visible so that I can, like, see it. So I know I, I should reply to it faster rather than later. And uh, I will I will have a good time showing you guys around. I don't, I don't know what you guys like about Seoul, for example, if you come to Seoul. But if you do come to Seoul... Oh, wait. Oh, this was a terrible idea. Terrible idea. I'm trapped. There we go. But if you do come to Seoul, I'm sure most of you probably like shopping and stuff like that, right? Probably Myeongdong, Dongdaemun, sure, why not? I am excited. I think this may be enough to finish our cage. This might be enough to finish our cage. If this ends up being perfect, I'm going to be so happy. Oh, don't fall off. And on that note, I think I'm basically out of other things to talk about today, so let's talk about that disappointing dinosaur news. Alright, so I believe that the fossil found a new species of dinosaur was found in, I believe, Cretaceous sedimentary rock, I believe it was. I can't remember exactly what era it was from, but I believe it was the Cretaceous, and I know it was an herbivore. It was found in sedimentary rock or sedimentary rock layer. In, where was it? Malaysia, I believe. Yes, in Malaysia. Now, Malaysia, semi-recently, I don't have a link to this one because it was just referenced in another article, but I believe that in Malaysia recently there was another find of a carnivorous fossil, a carnivorous dinosaur, a new species of carnivorous dinosaur, was discovered via a tooth fossil. This herbivore fossil is also a tooth fossil. Due to the shape, they can tell if it was an herbivore or a carnivore. As you guys know, things that eat grass and plant matter generally have flat, broad teeth, whereas the uh, wonderful carnivorous creatures of the wild 
they tend to uh, have very sharp teeth. Oh, wow. Seven extra. That is amazing. That is so perfect. All right. E. Okay. I'm pretty sure that I can do this for uh, all of these. I don't think it's going to look that good for this one, though. Hmm. I don't know. Doing these corner things definitely seems like it would be sort of boring. So maybe we shouldn't do this on the on the air. But anyway. Yeah, so in Malaysia found an herbivore tooth. I'm so happy that Ali has red eyes now. An herbivore tooth. And that's basically it. It's a new species of herbivore. We're not exactly sure what it was yet because we didn't find the rest of the skeleton. And basically it just points to the fact that Malaysia at this point in time, I believe in the Cretaceous period, was vegetative. There was vegetation around, which means there was probably an ecosystem as opposed to, you know, being under the ocean where there wasn't any sort of stuff living. I mean, there's plenty of stuff living in the ocean, but there are also barren areas. Or it wasn't like a giant desert with nothing in it, so there was something there. And now the question is, where should we dig to find the rest of it? And as the second day of our video comes to a close, that's basically everything that I have to talk about. I can't think of anything else. Please let me know on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, and let me know what I should talk about, because I don't freaking know. So complicated. We finally completed our enclosure for our Allosaurus. I just need to uh, round off these, these tops things and make them look nice. We will probably do the end of that next time. But for now, thank you so much everyone for watching. My name is Magnius, and I will see you next time.